Um, welcome to the AEC Bar, uh, a brand new channel from the technical specialists from Autodesk, uh, where we're going to be covering tips and tricks, uh, industry trends and technology uh, to support the architecture, engineering and construction industry. Uh, my name is Lee Mullin, I'm a technical specialist uh, covering construction in the area, uh, and this is my colleague Simon Gillis. Morning Lee. Um, and Simon's uh, one of our architectural experts. Um, and we're here today initially in our first video to talk about virtual reality and architecture um, and the wider engineering space, uh, something that's really been a hot topic recently. Um, so, Simon, um, if I can just talk to you about virtual reality and you know where people have seen benefits sure. for it. Yeah, absolutely. So where they've seen the benefit is the fact that they can really immerse clients into their designs. And if we think about it, you know, we've had a long history of producing drawings, we've moved into 3D modelling you know, many years ago, um, but what we're seeing now is technology has moved on. People don't just want to see a picture, they want to put themselves into that space and I think that's what's really exciting about what we're seeing now. Um, you know the, the real growth in virtual reality, moving from what was the gaming sector uh, or high-end automotive into more common usage. And I think that's what's really interesting. Okay, um, and I think you know one of the big changes that we've seen is you know to historically uh, to go into virtual reality, to go into kind of stereo renders. Mm -hmm. You were looking at maybe uh, fifty fifty thousand euros, hundred thousand euros uh, or pounds to be able to have a stereo cave yeah. to get into this kind of space. Uh, you know the costs have come down significantly, haven't they? Yeah, I mean, in terms of the equipment itself, you're looking at the ability to buy a headsets really around the sort of 800 to 1,000 euro stroke pound uh, mark, which is obviously significantly reduced for people. Yeah, uh, virtual reality enabled uh, computers, you know, you, a, a good one of those, 1,500, 2,000, you know, if you want to go into really high end, you'd have to pay more, of course, but mm -hmm. it's, it, you know, the cost has reduced significantly, and that's what's helping to enable people to do, to do this. Um, more really. Okay, and um, you know, as well as the hardware, um, it was typically you know quite an intensive job to get into a gaming engine to be, allow you to kind of get into virtual reality. Um, could you talk a little bit about how the software has changed? Yeah, sure. So what's really interesting is that you know if you think about it, we've made it um, more easy for people to to create these types of immersive experiences. So. You know, if you think about you know, a designer using Revit every day, we now have a one-click process with our Revit Life uh, product that enables them to go from the model up to a cloud service that prepares that model, renders it, and enables it to be utilised within the, the virtual reality environment. Okay, no, that's great. And I think, you know, as well as this giving, uh, you know, a view for clients to be able to uh, understand their new building or their new design, um, you know, we're also seeing it helping change the design process. Yeah. Um, it's not just one virtual reality um, experience that's created at the end of the project. This allows you to do it on a much more frequent basis, doesn't it? Well, I mean, it's about iterating. I mean, as designers, we all want to be able to iterate uh, as much as we can. You know, the, the, the requirement to have a finalised, solid design, you know, from very early on, you know, we know that doesn't happen, the client requirements, just creativity means that we're going to change and to be able to dynamically update those visualisations, to be able to immerse ourselves in them, to really understand them, is what this is enabling and that's where it's really exciting from a designer's point of view. Okay, yeah, that's great. Um, so, thank you for your time, Simon. Um, we'd like to kind of uh, get questions and feedback from yourselves. Um, so if you want to use the comments below on YouTube uh, or you want to email us on our email address uh, v.aec.bar at autodesk.com um, or contact us on Twitter, uh, then we look forward to hearing from you and we'll be speaking again about another topic fairly soon. Great, thanks Lee. Thank you.